the time to ask questions of your leaders, teachers, and preachers. Far too long you have stumbled in darkness searching for light. We have a man in our midst who can bring forth truth back beyond doubt, that can open the eyes and ears of those lost in darkness. As Saeed El Imam Isa Hadi Abadi is that man, and the author of over 150 books of a religious and scientific nature. As Saeed El Imam Isa Hadi Abadi has brought forth this information straight from the scriptures, so it cannot be denied. So we invite you to listen, to learn from the true light featuring As Saeed El Imam Isa Hadi Abadi. Are we not the bearers of witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it? And that He is alone and has no partners? And that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer of all the boundless universes? All gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generous eternal friend, and send salutations of Allah on all of His prophets and His apostles, and on the Messiah, the anointed one, and on the Mahdi, the guide, and on the Mujadda, the reformer, which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send greetings and we send peace throughout the boundless universe to all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. You are now listening to The True Light with As Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. The people who call themselves Bani Israel, what, what do they base their doctrine on? The word Bani in Hebrew, like Ibn or Bani, means son of. Bani Israel means the children of Israel. When you get into that subject, you get very touchy. Here's what I mean by that. You are Israelites insofar as you are Abraham's seed, and Abraham's son, Abraham had a son named Ismail from Hagar, and he had a son named Ishaq, Yitzhak, or it's Isaac. And Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. And from Jacob, who had his name changed to Israel, to ascend to El, or to wrestle with, or to verse, to try to take the heaven, his name was changed to Israel. You got from Jacob, whose name became Israel, 12 sons and one daughter. The fourth son, Judah, and the second son, Levi, were the most powerful. Then, from that, we got the last son, after Benjamin, we get, which is Benjamin, son of the right hand, we get Yusuf, called Joseph. Joseph was taken into captivity in Egypt, married, had two kids called Ephraim and Manasseh. They became classified as part of the family, and Levi became known as Levi, the high priest, and Judah left and went to the south. The migration of Judah to the south is why they have such a conflict in Ethiopia today, because they can't get organized who are the Falashians and who are the black Jews. Well, let's straight that out right now, because <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. When they speak of Suleiman having a wife who came from Yemen up to him and got impregnated and went back down and gave birth to a son named Memlech, that is one descendancy that got into Ethiopia. But they also speak about a remnant of the house of Judah that, that migrated uh, to the south and went into Ethiopia. The ones who went into Ethiopia on, of the Judah are called Falashian migrants. The ones who came down by way of the Sheba to a son Memlech are called Habashians, Ethiopians, and they're called black Jews. They left before the Mishnah and the Talmud, so they don't have all these hadith that the modern day so-called Jew lives by. They live by the, the basic five books. But the ancient ones, called Falashians, live up in the mountains. And they came from the original tribe of Judah, who also had portions of the tribe of Dan with them. So these people are going into Ethiopia, and they're taking Coptic Christians who put yarmulkes on, and taking them into Israel, and saying these are black Jews when they're not. Okay, to answer your question, the name Ben Israel means the children of Israel. The only remaining 
seed of Israel is Judah. The rest of them have perished. And Jesus himself said that he only came for the Lord's seed of the house of Israel, Judah only. Because in his time, that's all you could find. You could find male servants and women servants who were people who were converted to Judaism as it was called, as it's called today, and calling themselves Jews, just like in Muhammad Wasallam's time, you'll find many people who said they were Jews in Medina, but they were not of the house of Israel, the original house. The original house of Israel blew their covenant and perished. The books of Kings will, will, will explain that to you. Okay? So the Ben Israel, you find black people in the Western world today saying they're Ben Israel. You can say anything you want. You are Abraham's descendants. If you've been baptized in another religion, and even though you may understand there are things that you don't know, and when you find out that, yes, you know, I know differently now, how does that hold? Let me, let me answer that. That's an easy answer. That's the answer this way, that a lot of people pledge allegiance to Jesus, the Messiah. And Jesus himself was pledging allegiance to his heavenly father. A lot of people are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and not in the name of the father that sent him. He said, our father who art in heaven holy is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The Lord is my shepherd, which is from the same statement of him being the sheep or the lamb. So the point is a lot of people are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ when they should have been baptized in the name of the father that sent Jesus Christ. If I, so if a person is baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, they still have to be born again. He himself classified himself as a man. It was the mortal that wanted to make him a deity. Or make him the deity. Because he was a deity. He was not the deity. It's a big difference. You follow what I'm saying? So if a person is baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, when they get ready to become what Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. And no Christians are called the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. When they finally make that baptism, then they're truly born again. You follow that? When they, when they undergo the persecution that Jesus said they would, blessed is he who is persecuted after righteous name's sake. I don't know any Christians who get persecuted for becoming Christians. But the moment you tell your mother you're a Muslim, you got to be brainwashed, and these people are crazy. Then the persecution starts. Muslims all over the world are being persecuted. It's not so much of whether you're Christian or you're Jew, but the moment you say Muslim, then the persecution comes in. And the Messiah that the Christians are claiming is theirs, which is Jesus who was not a Christian, right? He himself said, blessed is he who was persecuted after righteous name's sake. For his is the kingdom of heaven. It says, great is his reward in the kingdom of heaven because they persecuted the prophet which was before you. Now, Jesus made this statement, and Jesus was a prophet, and he was speaking in a future tense, and who was Jesus talking about? Name another prophet that came after Jesus in Israel. There is none. The only other prophet who came that believed in what they referred to as monotheism, which is not the right meaning, but one deity, was the prophet Muhammad. He was the only other man that came that believed in all the books of Moses and all the teachings of Abraham. So when Jesus was saying that, he was saying to Muhammad, blessed are the peacemakers. Muhammad just happened to be the man that comes along and picks up the title Muslim, which means peacemaker. Calls his way of life Al-Islam, which means peace. Coincidentally, that when Jesus, who was the last prophet of Israel, because he said right in the Bible, I came to my own and they received me not. But as many as do, I give the power to become as sons of God. So he had finished his mission for the children of Israel because he was the last hope for the children of Israel. And they rejected him. Then he spoke right in St. John, but after me I will send another comforter, which confirms what was mentioned in Deuteronomy 18, when Moses was told that another prophet would come after him, like him. Also confirmed in St. John, when they asked John the Baptist, was he the prophet? They separated Messiah, because they asked him, are you the Messiah, which we later learned was Jesus Christ, because the word Christ, they translated to the Latin, comes from the word Messiah. So therefore, when they asked John the Baptist, was he that Messiah, we understood that that was Jesus. Then they said, and are you the prophet, which they put in another kind as if there's another person, another prophet that was destined to come. Who was this prophet 
if Jesus was standing there talking, and he was talking in a future tense, who was this prophet that was to come after Jesus in the future tense? And let me give you some of the clues to the attributes that he used. Jesus referred to this person as a comforter, which just so happens to translate through the Greek, through the Latin, to Ahmed. Ahmed is another way of saying Muhammad. Same word. Now, just coincidentally, that's there. Then coincidentally, Jesus said, Bless are the peacemakers. And this man, Muhammad, comes and calls his followers Muslims. From the word salam, which Jesus said when he walked into the upper room and he said, Salam alek to his disciples. Peace be unto you. So he understood the word salam in his mind. He didn't say shalom, he said salam alek, right in the Bible. He understood the name and he understood the meaning of the word peace. Yet he said, Bless are the peacemakers. And this is future tense. Jesus is talking. What man came after Jesus that A, was a prophet, like Moses, which means he was a lawgiver, because it says right in the books of St. John's again, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So they acknowledge, Jesus acknowledged Moses as a lawgiver, and a law that he himself said that he did not come to change, but to confirm. So he was not trying to mess up the law of Moses. He was still living according to the Israelite law. You follow that? And now who is this man, like Moses, who came with a, a text, a scripture, a lawgiver, who also referred to his followers as peacemakers, who were persecuted all over the world because of their religion, and who had a prophet who came after Jesus? Muhammad. Only one man who came along, whose name was Ahmed, comforter, right? Who called his followers peacemakers, Muslims, who brought forth a law, Al-Qur'an, and was and was referred to in the Qur'an as the seal of the Prophet. Who glorified Jesus' name because he kept referring to Jesus Christ in the Qur'an as the Messiah. The Qur'an has Isa al messiah in it. The Qur'an says Isa al maryam Just by virtue of him calling Jesus the Messiah and Messiah, in the Arabic word, Messiah means to wipe something clean. From the Hebrew word, Messiah or Messiah, meaning to anoint. From the Latin, which they get to the Greek, Christ, Christos, to be sacred, to be holy, to be pure. So, Muhammad, in the Quran, was constantly glorifying Jesus' name, just by virtue of saying, Jesus, the Messiah. Because Jesus said, in the books of St. John, when the Comforter comes, he shall glorify my holy name. And his holy name was Isa el Messiah. Because he became holy after he was anointed by John the Baptist. When he got his Messiahship. You see that? <laughs> Who else could Jesus have been talking about? The Christ was telling them to expect somebody else. And he wasn't talking about the angel because he said he'd be full of the angel. He'd be full of the Holy Ghost. Right? Because Jesus, when he got baptized in John, they said the angel came down in the dark and lighted upon him and dwelled there. He stayed there. Who was this angel? What angel came to Mary in the form of a man? That's right. And said, Hail Mary, thou have been chosen above the women of the world. And what did Mary say? She said, Glory be to you, no man has touched me. How can I have a child? And they said, The Lord merely declares a thing and it is. Kun fire kun. Exist and it exists. And she was covered of the Holy Ghost and did conceive. And they said, this thing which is in your womb is a holy thing of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, he will be called the Son of God. <laughs> they tell you right in the Bible why. Why Jesus was called the Son of God? Because Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost from God, the Word of God. I'm using God for y'all. I'd rather use Allah. And I've used a lot, not because I like it so much, but because Jesus also used it. Because if you believe Jesus is the one that said, Eli, Eli, lama sabakani, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? I'd like to equate Eli. And does you tell me, does Eli sound closer to Allah or does it sound closer to God? <laughs> so in your Bible, Jesus uses Eli. He's using the word Allah when he says, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? If you believe that was Jesus on the cross, then you're going to have to come to the grip that he didn't use God either. <laughs> because Eli is done with a Hebrew word for Elah, from which they get Elohim. Elohim is the plural like Allahumma. So Jesus didn't use the word God. 
nor did he use the word Jehovah. The word Jehovah was not put together until the 14th century. Jesus would have never even understood what they were talking about if they called themselves Jehovah's Witness. However, John did come to bear witness to the light. So the word witness is true. The word Jehovah is a mistranslation of the word Yahuwah. To be clear, that's true. But when you make it a religion, that's when you make the mistake. <laughs> because that's not what Jesus meant. Jesus told you what the children of God in the last day will be called, right in the Bible in Matthew. He said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The 144,000. He told them that you'll see them, the 144,000 will be gowned in white. Right? The cardinals wear red, and the fathers wear black. <laughs> Are they ignoring what Jesus is saying? They went totally opposite. I mean, I'm quite sure they read the book of Revelation like all of us have. Don't they see that Jesus' followers are supposed to wear white? What, are they maliciously ignoring it? Do they think one little knot of white in their throat, <laughs> one little splash of white of hair is sufficient? When Jesus said, gowned in white remnant, don't tell me that that is symbolic of a state of mind, because it said gowned. Your mind does not get downed. <laughs> they playing with your mind. And when they play with your mind, they're playing with your soul. And when they play with your soul, they're interfering with the path to paradise, to the garden. And that is dangerous. Be explicit when you talk. Jesus said, when you see that spirit, test that spirit. You all go to church and you don't question. Question reverence. See if he knows what he's talking about, because he is driving your spirit. He's steering your spirit. And test every imam and every teacher that stands up to teach you. Question them the way you come here and ask questions. Anybody won't get up like this and walk back and forth and talk to you and say, now ask me a question, they're afraid of something. They don't believe what they're teaching yet. Or they're not studying what they're teaching. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you believe in what you're teaching and you've studied it, then you should be able to get up here and be questioned about it. And defend it according to what you teach from, which is the scriptures. And if you read any of those Anthal law pamphlets, one thing you will see that is saturated with scripture. Every other verse. You can read books from Pakistan, and you can read books from all over the world from Muslims, and they'll do a whole lot of running off about hadith and won't put that Quran in there. One or two chapters from the Quran. If you ain't in the Quran, the Torah, and the Injil, then you're not in the north of Allah. You're not in the light. The light is intellect. And you've got to be able to be challenged. You cannot be mad at people because they want the right to question you about what you say to them. And it tells you right in the, in the book of Revelation, because the iniquities of men are so great, the hearts of many are wax cold. You know what that means? We don't know what to believe in no more. Everything sounds right. You get confused. But you have one gift. And that gift is intellect. And with that intellect, you have the option to question until you're satisfied. <laughs> and if you go to any religious meeting, any organization, and they don't allow you to question, you might as well get up and leave before they program you. Because you can be programmed by people who talk fast. And not just people who are in my church or in my congregation. When is the public going to just be able to sit down and ask questions Nobody can't get that close. And if you can't get that close, then you can't test the spirit. If you can't test the spirit, you're in the wrong room. Because your soul is what you're dealing with. Not my soul, not his soul, not his soul. You're dealing with your soul. And your soul must be satisfied. Nobody else's. And your brother could tell you anything he wants about what we're teaching here. You know what I'm saying? He can drill you as much as he feels like about these teachings. But it won't be, it won't be enough until you are satisfied in here. And when that finally, when that door flings open, that truth, you say, now I know where I belong. Or, I don't know. Now them answers are the crazy. I don't want to be there. That is your, what? That's your decision. And nobody can take that away from you. And many people are going to tell you, don't go over there to those answers. They're crazy. Right? Them brothers are nuts. Listen to them brothers over there. They do this, they, they work the Bible, they do this, all kind of crazy stuff. But you're still sitting here. Why? Because the divinity in you, the divine in you said, I want to hear for myself. I have that right. 
It is the following verse, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 6, Daniel chapter 9, verse 29, and, okay. and Isaiah chapter 66, verse 7, refer to Revelation chapter 12, verse 2. How do the former and latter relate to the times we live in? Does it refer to Revelation chapter 12, verse 2? No. This air quote is talking about the birth of the new Zion. Zion is being used as a symbol of the woman. If you read it, you see that. It's talking about the children of Israel. Jeremiah is talking about when King David comes to the throne. As you, if you read down a little further in that quote, you would have seen that. None of these quotes relate to Revelations. What people tend to do is they tend to take quotes out of the Old Testament and try to apply them to the New Testament by accident not understanding that the people who wrote the New Testament was writing it from the Old Testament, so they tried to make it sound like it came from there. But most of the things in the history of the Old Testament apply to the rise and fall of different kings in the house of Israel. Like Jeremiah, which we were speaking about, has to do with the coming of David the king to throne. It says right in it, it'll be when David rules the throne. All right? When you go down from 6, 7, 8, 9 of 30, you come up with 9, but they shall serve the Lord, their creator, and David, their king, whom I will raise future tense up unto them. So this is way before Revelation was even revealed, because they put this in the future tense. David, their king, whom I shall, you see the word shall? Shall raise up unto them. Which means that this was prior to David's time, because it was Jacob who they were speaking to, and was speaking about when who Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, and when David would be raised up. That's what he was speaking about in Jeremiah the 30th chapter. And in Isaiah chapter 66-7, they're talking about the, the birth of Israel itself. They, they say, before she travails, she brought forth, before her pain came, and she delivered a man-child. This man-child they're speaking about is Jacob, whose name is Israel, because the nation of Israel came out of her, came out of Jacob. And we'll go on to explain that. Someone read. Number eight. Who have heard such a thing? Who have seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? See, it's speaking of a nation. All these are questions about what they were talking about. Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion, which is uh, the word Jerusalem in the Greek, Zion is Jerusalem, travails, she brought forth her children. Now that's plural. Her became plural. You see, her, the single word for her children, speaking of Jerusalem, out of Jacob, who was that male child they spoke of, who had his name changed from Jacob to Israel and became the father of the 12 tribes of Israel of which Zion was built and the reestablishment of the temple. You have to be real careful when we read the Torah because so few people understand the scriptures that they like to make things from the New Testament fit in the Torah the same way a lot of Muslims try to make things that in the Hadith match the Quran when they don't. These are writings of men, and they sometimes get them confused. The stories of the Torah are usually self-explanatory, and the, the things of the New Testament, Revelations and the books written by Paul, and etc., were things written after the Torah. So these men, it was very easy for them to try to make things sound like it was the Torah, because they had already had the Torah in their hands. You see, if they never had the Torah, it would be very difficult to make the Emmanuel of the New Testament look like he's the Emmanuel of the Old Testament. Then they would have to have divine inspiration. But nowhere in Christianity is divine inspiration necessary. Why? Because they use all their prophecies on the Old Testament, which was already divinely inspired to Moses and the various prophets before him. You understand what I mean? All they had to do is look back in there and then write their books and make it look like it. That's a very interesting thing that Christians don't seem to realize, that 90% of the things they preach and prophesy are things that were previously written. Nothing in the New Testament can make anything look like it's divine, because there's nothing said in there that's new. Everything in there is coming from explanation of the Torah, which Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salatu wa salam, which is Jesus, the son of Mary, said that he did not come with any law, but the law came from Moses, but grace and truth came through him. Telling them that the law of the, of the five books of Moses were the law he followed by, not the new laws formed by them. So Paul and people who were trying to pervert the teachings to teach the Gentiles, though they were told not to teach the Gentiles by Jesus, they wanted to teach the Gentiles anyway because they couldn't convert the Yahudi who spoke Hebrew 
they couldn't reach them because they couldn't explain the doctrine in detail. So what they had to do is form their own doctrine and teach the Gentiles, which is the teachings that are spreading throughout the Western world and most of the, of the world today call Christianity, the teachings of Paul, the self-acclaimed apostle, which is just like in Islam today, you find many people, Muslims going from country to country, calling themselves sheikh and imam and picking up certain titles, Pakistanians, Afghanistanians, Maghribians, Sudanese, and these people are not teaching the Quran, they're teaching Hadith, they're teaching Sirah, they're teaching the history of Islam, but they cannot teach out of the Quran itself because they don't understand it. So what they did is that scholars write a bunch of collections of books called Ahadatha or Hadith, traditions and tales about what Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did or said which cannot be checked or confirmed by the Quran in most cases and they started living by those and not living by the Quran and when you confront them with the Quran and say Zalik al kitabu la rayba fihi this is the scripture of Allah and there's no doubt in it they immediately say what the hadith says you say well in the Quran it says don't do this they say what the hadith says and they start quoting men like Bukhari and Shafi and Muslim and Abu Huraira, as opposed to quoting men like Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, Yunus, Yaqub, which are the men of the Torah, who are mentioned in this Quran. I'm saying that to say Muslims are just as in such a state of darkness as the Christians were insofar as they do more quoting of Hadith than they do the very words of Allah. The way the Christians do more quoting of Paul and people like that than they do Jesus, because 90% of the things that you ask a Christian did Jesus say it? They have no answer. Show me where Jesus said this. Show me. It's always Paul said it, or Peter said it, or Matthew said it, but where did Jesus say it? You follow? So I'm trying to make that to show you how you pull out three good quotes and say it doesn't supply to Revelation. It's very difficult to match the Old Testament and the New because the people who wrote the New Testament already had the Old Testament in their hands so they could make it sound like it fitted. They could make anything sound like anything they want because they already had the books, like out of one book. And I can, I can write a book now and make it sound like you're the prophecy if I use the Torah to make you sound like you're the New Testament. But will it match up is the thing. What it is, is men have got away from the truth of these ways of life. You follow? Which would be the religion of Abraham and have formed the religion of Jesus, the religion of Jacob, and the religion of Muhammad. You see? Alayhi salatu wasalam. And that's where the problem comes in. Very difficult to master scriptures. It takes a lot of skill. It doesn't happen by love. We will return with the true light after this brief intermission. Now is the time to ask questions of your leaders, teachers, and preachers. Where did all the races of people come from? Why did John have to baptize Jesus at the Jordan? And why do the four Gospels contradict each other? The answer to these questions can be with only one man, as Saeed El Imam Isa Al Hadi Mahdi, the man who has written over 150 books on such topics as Is There Life on Other Planets? How Were the Pyramids Built? What Race Was Adam and Eve? And Was the Holy Quran Made Up by Muhammad? Or Was It a Divine Scripture Sent from the Most High? And What Is the Difference Between the Spirit and the Soul? The answer to these questions can be found in the most dynamic books in history, authored by As Saeed El Imam Isa Al Hadi Mahdi. These books can be purchased at the original Tenth Kita at 719 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11221. Would you like to see the man behind the voice you hear teaching the total truth? He is there at the Hall of Knowledge located at 548 Hart Street, Brooklyn, New York. Every Saturday and Sunday at 1 p.m., the Nubian Islamic Hebrews would like to invite you to question and answer classes with a Sayyid Ali Mamisa al Hadi Mahdi. Come listen and learn. Hear the words of truth for yourself. Hear the answers to long awaited questions. Also for your spiritual growth, an intricate design woven prayer rug designed by the hand of a Sayyid Ali Mamisa al Hadi Mahdi. Also available are prayer beads, incense, and oils. If you would like any further information on these items, contact the original tents of Kidar, 719 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11221. And be sure to ask for a listing of the most dynamic books in history, authored by a Sayyid Ali Mamisa al Hadi Mahdi. Now let us continue with the true light. Remember, you are the light, and you have the power over all things. First, Allah taught me many years in Quran how to live and how to raise my children. But the Hadith taught me things that it made me the woman that I am today. Allah 
sent the angel Gabriel with the word to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that on the last days there would be more Muslims in clothes and in names than by faith and that the believers would be all alone in the world and I bear witness to that. And um, sometimes, you know, it's better to be alone and just wait for Allah to come for you. But you have to understand that when you, I understand what you're saying. When you read the Quran and you read sections that say, وَتَصِّمُوا بِالْحَبِّ اللَّهِ جَمِعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّكُمْ And hold on to حبل الله as a jama'a وَلَا تَفَرَّكُمْ as a community. You said all the right things. You want to set your life patterns after Prophet Muhammad, right? Yes. But the Prophet Muhammad left Mecca because they couldn't practice and went to Medina and set up a what? A community called the Ummah. Yes. And he lived in this community and he said laws around a community of Beit Amal, everything, of the Madrasa, you know, the Khalwa of Quranic classes, this was community living. He, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, enjoined that. Now the point of a hadith is that I understand fully that you can get guidance from hadith on how to do certain things. That's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is you can do that with the Jehovah Witness book or a Seven Day Adventist book too. And to them it looks right. I'm saying to be safe for your children on Yawn Ahri is to realize that the hadith are from men, not from Allah. We do not say don't read hadith. Ansars read hadith. We say don't read any that does not match the Quran. That is our point. They are hadith that comply directly with the Quran. We have no gripe with that. It's only when you come with certain hadith. For instance, it says in hadith that when Aisha, who's resorted to Rasulullah, when the wives of Rasulullah used to have her menstruation, he used to lay his head on her lap and she would braid his hair. Uh, this is supposed to be Bukhari hadith. We know that the Quran says when a woman's in a menstruation, a man is not supposed to touch her. So somewhere on the line, somebody's misleading us and it's too dangerous for us to try to sit here and differentiate which hadith is right and which is wrong when we have the Quran. And we could just try to live the sunnah instead of reading books of men. You made a very good point. The devil is very deceptive. What, that could be Bukhari and Shafi and Maliki and Humbali and too and Muslim. All those guys who write the hadith because nowhere in the Quran does it tell me and you to expect the hadith to come. And see, there's another thing Muslims do. Muslims throughout the Arab world take the, the New Testament of the Bible of St. John's and say that the Comforter is Muhammad. But when it comes to the far away, he shall not speak of himself. Only that which he hears shall he speak. Then all of a sudden, they become numb on me. Because if Muhammad was not to speak of himself, then there'd be no sayings of Muhammad. Everything he spoke would be from Allah Ta'ala by way of the angel Jibrayim. And when Jibrail came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the cave, just what did Jibrail say to him? Ikra. That's all he said to him. He said, Muhammad Iqra. Which means what? It means read. It doesn't mean recite. doesn't mean to talk. doesn't mean at the kalim, at the hadith, to conversate. It means read something. Something previously written he held in front of Muhammad. And said, Muhammad, ya Muhammad Iqra. And he said, Ya Jibrael, ma'ana bi Qarian. I am not a Qarian. I am not a reader. Because at the time, the most prominent thing men did was read poetry. He said, Ya Jibrael, ma'ana bi Qarian. I am not one who utilizes the ability to read. He says, Aidan, again, Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, Iqra. And he said, Ya Jibrael, ma'ana bi Qarian. He kept repeating this over and over again. Why did he keep repeating it? Because he was trying to get Rasulullah to recite a specific section in the Quran. Right? We Muslims know the secret of that section. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi. What was he telling him? Muhammad recite something in the name of someone. Who was it that he was speaking of? That's right. He was telling Muhammad to recite in the name of Allah. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaka. Khalaka l-insana min alaka. Iqra wa rabbuka wal akram alladhi alam bil kalam. Alam al-insana ma'lam ya'lam. What is he telling him? He's saying, read Muhammad using the name of the sustainer which is Allah. Who created everything? 
He created man from a gushing forth fluid, which is semen. Ikra warabuka wal akram. I mean, and your sustainer, establish that your sustainer is karama, is generous, honorable. Alladhi alam bil kalam. He taught people by way of the quilt, the pen. And he taught human beings ma what lam he did not yalam know. You see that? Then he goes on and makes a very important statement. What does it mean? But understand this that man is an inordinate creature, a disobedient creature. You understand? He's telling us who we should rely on and who we should not rely on. And when he was giving this Quran to Muhammad, he was telling him to rely on Allah and the Quran, not men. Not men. And Bukhari and Shafi and Hamdi and them are men. I don't care whether we call them the companions or not, they were men. They were not divine. Tanazalu malaikati wa ruhufi. We sent down the angels in that fee, and the spirit was with them in the Laylatul Qadri, in the night of power. The point is, I understand it's easier to have men explain to you how to live, but that is what's wrong. The way to live Islam is not meant to be easy, because we're trying to earn our way back to something that we were offered by Allah as a gift, hadiyah, and we turned down. We started out in the garden, remember? We was in the same garden, Jannah. And Allah there said, eat of everything. I've given you all of these things. But in the midst, in the center of the garden, I have to put this tree for will, for man's willpower. Don't touch it. And what did we do? We went right to it and ate of it. And he said, now that you've done that, you're going to die. You're going to know good from evil. You split the atom, Adam. So get down from this Jannah to earth. We've done this to ourselves. Earn your way back to paradise. Earn your way back to the likeness of Allah. And that's what we've been doing. But what we, men come along in many disguises to deceive us. And this, but I always ask Muslims every time I meet, whether I'm in Egypt or in Saudi, I say, show me anywhere in this Quran where it says we should follow somebody's hadith, please show me. And they can't. And I say, then why should I do it? Because you say so? Because it was collected after Muhammad now, not while he was there. Show me, please, somebody, so I would know. I do see in this Quran multiple places where it refers me back to the Torah, where it refers me back to the Injil. I see names in here. I see Jacob. I see Isaac. I see Moses. I see Jesus, I see Jonah, I see Lot, I see Zechariah, I see Elijah, I see Elias, I see Yassin, I see Luqman, I see, I see all of these names of men who I find in the Torah. But I don't see Bukhari, I don't see Shafi, I don't see Hanbali, I don't see Maliki, I don't see Muslim, I don't see none of these men in the Quran mentioned. I read this Quran backwards and forwards many times in many parts of the world. And I asked men who were scholars when I was in the university in, in Khartoum, I asked them. When I was in the university in Omdurman, I asked them. When I was in the university in Cairo, I asked them. When I was in Syria, I asked them. When I was in Saudi, I asked them in Medina. And none of them could show me. I said, okay, then please show me somewhere in this Quran where it tells me not to read the Torah in the Injil. Please show me. And they couldn't do it. I said, show me anywhere in this Quran where it says the Torah and the Injil is tampered with, and they couldn't do it. So it doesn't say exactly. I said, but this Quran is an exact text. It doesn't make mistakes, and I'm not going to mislead my children. I know the Quran came from Allah. I know the Torah came from Allah. I know the Injil came from Allah. I know the Zubar, the Psalms came from Allah. But I don't know about these hadiths. And until someone can show me them in there, I'm going to raise my children on the scriptures of Allah. And that's the Quran and the Torah. This is a boy in the Injil and the Hadith. The Quran tells you what to follow. It says, follow Rasulullah and this text, the Quran. It does not give us an alternative. And it's frightening for the children. 
that, we, that, that you have to feel alone in the world when there's a community that says, well, come home where people are like you are trying, and we're going to fuss and fight in here, we're going to go through all the same thing, but we're trying at least together, and we'll fail, and we'll, we'll cry together, we'll fuss together, we'll scrape together, but, we'll, but it will be together the way Rasulullah did with his people in the beginning. They fought together, they cried together, they got defeated together, but it was together. And that's how we have to do it. We have to be an ummah to Rasulullah, a community, a nation of his. Not individuals. There's no, we can't be individuals. We've got to come together and tolerate each other. As hard as that may seem for us as a people. Go ahead. Um, Bismillah. Aki, I don't know. We do need hadith. It's just that you have to understand that uh, as an American, you have a problem with, with language. And in I doing that, that, we end up getting misinformed. Like, okay, you got a Quran. If you open the Quran, if you just read it, it tells you that the Quran is the hadith. It tells you in the Quran that no, no, is what I'm saying. In the Quran, the 39th chapter, the 23rd verse will tell you that the Quran is the Hadith. It says Allah nazala ahsan al Hadith right there. Allah has sent down the best Hadith. Open the Quran and look right there in Arabic. You see it. I know that. You see 23, 39, 23 says Allah, Allah nazala ahsan al Hadith. Right? You see that there? I, I'm seeing it through my eyes. I don't have to... I'm saying, and right there in the Arabic, it tells you that the Quran is the Hadith. Allah has sent down the best of Hadith, a scripture that is consistent, it says. Then in another section in 31, 6 through 7, it says the same thing. Don't buy Hadith. All I can say is that you, you don't need books by men when you have the Qur'an. The Qur'an is total and these hadith are misguided books by mortals to take people away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you were, when you were studying your Qur'an, you was in the right guidance then. You didn't need none of those other things. You had the right guidance. And don't let anyone take you away from Allah. If you open the Quran to 2530, it'll say the same thing. And Allah, the Apostle, will say, My sustainer, my people have deserted this Quran. They have deserted the Quran. It tells you right there in the Quran, the 25th chapter, the 30th and 31st verse. Waqala ar Rasul. He's telling you that his people, the Apostle, has said, my sustainer, my people have deserted the Qur'an. We thus set up against every prophet enemies who are wicked. It's telling you, it's warning you against people who will, go, who will leave the Qur'an for writings of men. Write these chapters down and study them when you get home. 45, 6 through 11. It says, woe to every sinful fabricator. It tells you right there about hadith again. These are Allah's verses. Tilka ayatullah. We recite them to you truthfully. Bilhaq. In which hadith. Besides Allah's verses, do you live in? Please someone read that out loud. 45, 6 through 11. Read 45, 6 to 11. It tells you right there. And the word in there is hadith. These are the communications of Allah which we recite to you with truth. Then, in what announcement? But the word here is hadith. Big word is hadith. No but they translate it in Pakistan is with announcement. In what hadith? Right there in Arabic. Write the word out on the blackboard and explain it. Hadith. In which hadith then will you put your trust in? And then it says, besides Allah and his verses, they do believe in. Woe to every sinful fabricator is telling us that people are going to fabricate books after this Qur'an called Hadith. Right in the Qur'an, but no one can show you in the Qur'an where it says you should get guidance from them. But I'm showing you in the Qur'an, the word Hadith is in there saying don't follow them. Show them the word so they'll see. Because you have to know the truth, because the truth will make you free. Nobody can pervert or change Allah's words. 
the Quran has been tampered with too. Here you said that we shouldn't call Allah God. That's the but translation. Yet, but yet in the Quran it talks so much about That's the translation. God. That's why See? That's why, that's not tampering the Quran, that's translations. That's why the first thing I said is you people have to let your children learn Arabic so that they don't get caught up in these confusions and these men's opinions. If those kids spoke Arabic, they would never even get to the word God because there is no word God in Arabic. So the main thing is the problem here is a lack of understanding the language and you got to care about the kids enough to get them to get the language so that they don't be sitting around doing what me and you are doing now later on in life because we could be arguing over little word meanings and waste a lot of time but if the kids, if you get the kids to Arabic which you can't teach them yourself, you follow, then they will know the truth and it won't be so easily misled. You didn't know the word Hadith. Most people don't even know the word Hadith is mentioned in the Quran as something that shouldn't be read because the people that come over here teaching them are Pakistanians predominantly or Afghanistanians and they don't know Arabic well enough. It's a lack of understanding the language why people are so misguided. That is the whole thing. You can't compare Hadith to Quran. They're two different kind of Arabics, first of all. One is the Arabic of a man and the other is divinely inspired from Allah. And the Arabic that's in the Hadith is not the same Arabic of the Quran. They don't even use the same terminology or grammatical structures. One of them is man's writings and it's obvious when you read it in Arabic and the other is divinely inspired which is obvious when you read it in Tajweed or Tartil of Quran. This is very important. I'm not trying to verse you. I'm just trying to help you because I met many Muslims along the path of my life who have been misguided by men and they don't realize, like I just showed you in this Quran, there are people that turn away from Allah, it says in the Quran. They turn away and they forsake the Quran for writings of men. It says it in the Quran and it uses the word Hadith in Arabic, but none of those translators put it there because they wasn't trying to wake y'all up. They didn't want y'all. They hate me. They hate me because I come along and I point out words and the meaning of words and I'm conscious of racial differences and colors and hues and where people come from because Allah is conscious of it. They hate the fact that I point these things out. But the truth must be known. And in the scriptures Allah tells me and you to look out for men who will give us hadith. Simple, right in the Quran. It's like that. I'm quite sure the brother put it on the blackboard. We have ha hadith, I keep showing That's right, it's hadith. Del. Show me where in the Quran it says hadith. Okay, open your holy Quran. You got it? Yes. And open it to the 45th chapter. And we go to the 6th verse. We have in English, they say, these are the communications of Allah. Because I believe you're using the Shia Quran also, right? Now let's look at the Arabic. Tilka ayatu Allah. These are the signs of Allah. Natluha, all right, which are recited alayka on, on you, bil haq, by way of the facts or the truth. Right? Fabi ayah. And now listen now, you see that word? It follows that. Fabi ayah. You see, ha. Del, yeah, the. You see that? Then after that it says, Badullah. The word you see there, right after that, ba, ba, alif, yeah, is ha, del, yeah, the. That word is hadith. These are the communications of Allah, which we recite to you with truth. Then, in what Hadith, after Allah's signs, by the Allah wa ayatuhu, you know, will you believe? Woe, wailing li kulli, a fakin atim. Woe to every sinful liar. It's telling us right there the word, do you see that word hadith there? In the Quran, it's telling us not to follow them. It said the Quran is what was given to you, Muhammad. Tilka ayatullah. Bil haq. So now in what? Fabiya ba. So in which thing? Ayah. Which is ayah. Hadith. So which of these hadith? Ba'd Allah ayatuhu. After Allah's signs, you minu. Will you, will you put your faith? After the Quran. It says ba'd Allah. The next word of the hadith is ba'd. Which means after. Ba. Ayn. Del. After the, now what is the signs of Allah? The Quran. 
El Quran. It says like at what things after the Quran are you going to put your faith? And the only book that came after the Quran is the Hadith. And it has the word Hadith right there in Arabic. It's right there. So, 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 Allah said Rasulullah, and, and we can't follow his teaching. We, we have to follow, follow yes, we have to follow his way of doing things. And where did he get his way of doing things from? He got his way of doing things from Abraham. Open the Holy Quran at chapter 2, verse 130. It says, وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَنْ مِلَاهِ Ibrahim إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِيحِ نَفْسَهُ Which means, wa an men. Who is it? Which is Ragaba, Who turns away or forsakes or leaves or forgets or tries not to follow. And about Mila, the religion of Abraham, Ibrahim, Illa, except for men, he who, Safihu, is a fool, Nefsahu, within his own spirit. And if we go to the same chapter, the 136th verse, it says, Say, Kalu amana billahi wa ma unzila ilayna wa ma unzila ila Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq wa Yaqub. Asbat. Say this, Muhammad. We believe, we believe. Amana billahi, by way of Allah. Wa ma unzil. And what was sent Elena to us. Wa ma unzil ila Ibrahim. And what was sent to Abraham. And Ishmael. And Isaac. And Jacob. And the tribes of Israel. Musa, and what was given to Moses? Wa Isa. You see that? Wa And what was given to all of the other prophets? Min Rabbihim from their sustainer. La nufarik baina ahadin. No, we don't make any nufarik. No distinctions baina ahadin between any of them. Min hum. Wa nahnu lahu muslimun. And we are indeed. Muslims. This is the religion we're supposed to be following according to the Quran. This is what Allah taught us. And this is the religion that Muhammad followed. You know why the problem comes up in America so difficult in other places? Because if you was in, let's say, Sudan, in my country, you would have been raised in the Sunnah. Because things people do in that environment are natural. As they don't need to read Hadith there. Because they've been living how to fast how to circumcise, how to marry all this time. It's only because it's something new in America that you got to go to these books for this guidance. You follow? But the Ansars here are taught is the same way that Muhammad Ahmed al-Mahdi alayhi salam taught the Ansars in Sudan in the 18th century who got it from Ali and Fatima who was the beloved daughter of the Prophet. So in Sudan, they live a certain way. That's why our brothers wear a certain type of jalabiyah. Our women wear their face covered a certain way. Uh, we do certain things certain ways because we have our sunnah as passed down to us through a sensula. We don't have to read our deed. We got it from our fathers. My father taught me how to pray. And my father was taught by his father, was taught by his father who takes his descendants. He's straight back to Mustafa Muhammad Al-Amin, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I know how to live. I don't need hadith. I never had to read it. Because I was told, don't eat with this, eat with these fingers, sit down when you do this, don't touch that, don't talk with food. And that was the sunnah of Rasulullah. That's why I'm setting up a community, so people can learn to live the sunnah and not read it. So until we meet again. Allah ma'akum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah ta'ala wa barakatuh. خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم صدق الله العظيم
Those are verses 1 through 5 of Salatul Alaq from the Holy Quran chapter, Separation of Cells. Now the 96th, originally the first chapter, revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Translation by as Sayyid Imam Isa al Hadi Mahdi. And it reads as follows Begin all things with the illustrious names of Allah, the Heal of the Most Merciful. O seal of the prophets of Allah, Muhammad, by the supreme sovereignty of your sustainer, creator, you are being ordered to read by beginning with the name of your illustrious sustainer who created all things. He, Allah, created all human beings of a separating cell. So read because your sustainer, Allah, is most generous. He uses the quill to teach. He, Allah, taught human beings what they would have never known. You have been listening to The True Light with a Sayyid al Imam Isa al Hadi al the Nubian Islamic Hebrew Mission would like you to write or send questions to True Light, 719 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11221.